Hi, my name is Gemma Dryden. I'm a qualified veteran nurse. Today I'd like to talk to you about some hints and tips um, that you can implement in the home environment when your pet is recovering from surgery. Recently, I have gone through this experience myself, which has brought me to why I would like to discuss my own experience as to how I use my experience and my knowledge as a nurse together to come up with some hints and tips. So my own dog Yogi has recently gone through brain surgery. Um, so when he was discharged from the hospital, I was informed that he couldn't exercise off lead for about eight weeks. This was quite tricky as an owner to hear these words because we all know our animals love exercise and like their normal routine. But I took the information on board um, as I knew that his surgery um, was high risk and that his wound postoperatively was very important that we kept it from getting damaged. So some of the things I decided to come up with um, to help him um, stay occupied and also to prevent him becoming overweight in this period because he wasn't exercising. And we know as humans, if we eat too many calories and we don't burn off those calories, then that will go on as weight. So a couple of things I decided to do, and this is where as, as a nurse, I took my own knowledge. So as nurses, we are able to look into an animal's nutritional um, calorie requirement for the day. And this is called a resting energy requirement. So this is something you can ask your nurses in your practice to help you with. Now, with the yoga, it's a different, slightly different case because he's got a long period, um, a long time to recover. So it's not just a short period. For example, if an animal was discharged after a, after being spayed, then obviously that would be a seven to ten, seven to ten day post op period. Yogi's got eight weeks, so I really didn't want him to become overweight in this time. And the other dilemma that I had is that he's on some medication. So one being steroids and one being a medication to prevent seizures. And both these medications really affected how hungry he was. So I didn't want to feed his behaviour because he was feeling hungry by overfeeding him. Because I really didn't want him to become overweight, which would obviously make more problems for him. So what I decided to do was work out his resting energy requirement and I worked out the toppest, the highest level that I could. I then obviously would measure that into two meals, once in the morning and once in the evening, but I would leave a certain amount to provide him throughout the day. Um, so a couple of things I decided to use. So you'll have all have seen the one thing that I'm going to show you now. Um, so there's lots of different brands and makes of this on the market. Um, so what I would do is I'd take his dry food and I would boil the kettle. The kettle would then, um, I would then pour the water over his food and um, let it soak for about 15 minutes. I would then put this into the Kong and basically I would freeze them. Now I'd make two of these. I wouldn't always feed him the two because remember I've worked out his top level of food I could give him that day and I wouldn't always give him that full amount in the day. It would really depend on his behaviour and what exercise I had given him that day, which to begin with was literally five minutes twice a day which then led into 10 minutes twice a day um but like i say if his behavior was being quite um annoying so to speak because he was obviously feeling very hungry then i might have provided him with the second one knowing that i could within within his calories so this was one option the second thing I did, I looked into, just went onto Facebook, onto, onto the internet. Um, so Amazon is where I found this one. And this basically is where you place the treats into this. So instead of using treats, I would use his daily allowance again. And this is also aids in his teeth because as he tries to chew these out, he would actually brush his teeth at the same time. So this is just another example that I use. Now there's lots and lots of these different types of things in the market. It's ones you can use that they roll around the room. I decided not to use this for yoga because obviously his head was the most fragile point and I didn't want him to damage that. I then decided after a few weeks he was eating his food very fast and we know as humans that if we don't engage our brain when we're eating sometimes we don't realize we've actually eaten any food and we still feel hungry so this is a, a slow feeder so you can get many different varieties of these on the market but this is the one i chose again just googled slow feeders and then got this one off amazon this would make him be able to eat his food a lot slower and hopefully feel a little bit more satisfied um so if from a normal food bowl he would eat this easily within 30 to 50 seconds um in this it could take him over a minute to eat his food um, these are things I decided to implement to help Yogi um, feel a little bit more occupied, hopefully providing him more um, 
more stimulation to make sure he's not getting bored at home and obviously I can only exercise him very little. I'm pleased to say we're at eight weeks today and he's doing super well and I just hope that these hints and tips are, are going to help you if you ever have to experience your animal going through a long post-op period. So don't forget registered veterinary nurses are there um, in your practices to help you help your pets. I hope this has been helpful. Bye for now.